Good morning, everyone. I'm Madison Nosek here in the KXAN Live Studio. Thanks so much for joining me and starting your Tuesday morning off with me here for a recap of the headlines making top stories today. But as per usual, I want to show you guys what downtown Austin's looking like. It's supposed to be pretty hot today. Not really shocking anyone. As you can see, cloud, no clouds at all in the sky. The sky is very clear and downtown just looks gorgeous. If you want to get a walk or a run in on Town Lake down there, Lady Bird Lake, um, you definitely should now because it is only going to get warmer today. I'm going to show you guys what that's going to look like full right now. Just a really pretty view. Um, earlier, our photog, Sally Hernandez, was out doing a live interview, and our photographer sent us a wonderful screenshot of the temperatures being 80 degrees at 6 a.m. So, uh, definitely not a cool day, but. We are supposed to be starting tomorrow off. Um, it's supposed to be our coolest morning that we've had in a while. So get excited for that as um, a couple of new districts are starting school today and um, later this week as well. But I want to get you guys started with the uh, stories making headlines today. So let's jump into it. Today, Austin moves into a stage two water restrictions um, starting this evening. Automatic and hose end watering can only be done one day a week and only after 7 p.m. So it's going to start tonight at 7. If you wash your car at home, you can only use an auto shutoff valve or a bucket. Restaurants can serve water, but you have to request it. And breaking any of these restrictions could result in up to a $1,000 fine for each violation. But if you want to head on over to kxan.com, you can check what restrictions are in place in your area specifically. State resources to fight wildfires are on standby this morning. Governor Abbott issued a disaster declaration for nearly 200 counties across Texas. That's the majority of the state, including Central Texas. This move will allow additional resources to be dispatched to different affected counties. And we're also going to get an update later today on Austin and Travis County's response to the ongoing extreme heat and wildfire threat. City and, council, city and county leaders um, are going to provide the update along with wildfire safety and readiness plans. For more than a year, Hayes CISD has dealt with a serious problem of students overdosing on fentanyl. We just received new numbers from the district's chief of safety and security. This comes as the new school year begins today for them. In total, 35 students have overdosed on fentanyl since May of 2022, and six students have died. The district had to administer Narcan to eight students who overdosed on actual campus, and 21 more Hayes CISD students overdosed off of campus. This past summer specifically, the district's chief of safety and security said that two students overdosed and the school district held assemblies at the end of the school year last year to warn students of the dangers of fentanyl. Right now, the district is pushing education on fentanyl overdoses. Schools have posters talking about the problem up around campuses and there are special presentations with families who have lost a child to fentanyl. The district is also working on a video series with students who had to go through rehab or who had to be saved with Narcan. It's even working with student leaders to create peer-to-peer -peer engagement. And even though most overdoses are happening outside of school grounds, every school is fully stocked with Narcan in the nurses' clinic. An Atlanta grand jury indicted former President Donald Trump and 18 others. It's a case focused on Trump's efforts to reverse the results of the 2020 election in Georgia. This is the fourth criminal case brought against the former president, the second this month to allege that he tried to interfere with the results of the vote. Other defendants include Trump's former White House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows, and um, two lawyers, Rudy Giuliani and John Eastman, the 98-page indictment lists 41 criminal counts in all. And unlike Trump's three previous court appearances, the entire process in Georgia could actually be played out on live television. State law allows for cameras in the courtroom as long as they have a judge, like he gives permission and they have a judge's approval for it. 
Well, that's all I have for you guys this morning. Thank you so much for joining me here on KXAN Live. Again, I'm Madison Nosek, and we will see you tomorrow. Have a good day, everyone. Thanks. Bye.